<sighs> well, okay, guys, it turns out we're like in week uh, five. That was quick, wasn't it? So you guys did really well on the on the, um, on the midterm. There's a couple of you. I'm going to open it back up so you can do that second uh, review on those because that's interesting that usually we were allowed to do two of those uh, updates. So we'll give you a chance to get that done real quick this week. Um, this is week five. So we've got now we're looking at what the respiratory, digestive and urinary systems. Last week we did cardiovascular and lymphatic. The cardiovascular one was difficult because cardiovascular can be a real pain. There's a few different things to really concentrate on that one. And we only got a couple minutes. So I'm going to go over that here real quick. Number one, the chambers of the heart, the direction of blood flow. That's number one. Two, you've got things like the SA node and the AV node and the pacemaker and all of that jazz is the electrical part. And then you have things like the PQRST, that's the, the wave, the heartbeat, boop, 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 right, that you see on the EKGs or the ECGs as they're more commonly known because electrocardiogram was once spelled with a K because it was Austrian and now it's a C because it's English. Anyway. Um, so that's what to know about those kind of things, the electrical component and the, the muscle contraction and all that kind of stuff. It gets kind of hairy. Um, don't worry too much about it as long as you're getting a good uh, initial kind of uh, go at it. I think you're going to do just fine. And for the respiratory, digestive and urinary tract system, those three really, if we're looking at them, they do control a lot of our pH, which is the potential of hydrogen or the amount of acid and um alkaline in the blood. So if your acid gets too high, right, you start, you stop breathing, you build up carbonic acid and lactic acid and all these kind of things in the blood. And then you have to get extra oxygen to help um, get rid of that. Now your body can do a couple things. It can pull some, it can pull um, uh, uh, through the parathyroids. It can pull some of the, the, the calcium from the bone and that will buffer that acid and reduce it. That's a longer term thing. Initially though, in the urinary system, you'll go to the bathroom and get rid of a lot of hydrogen ions in the form of uric acid and other acids. So, <clears throat> uh, hydrogen ions, you know, like that's, that's your pH. The more you have, uh, the, the lower that pH is and, um, because they're free floating, right? And, uh, a buffer is something that, that reduces the acidity. Now, digestive system is, of course, bringing in nutrients, um, exchanging everything around, pulling out water, pulling out amino acids. If it's proteins, they're broken down in amino acids through prote proteases, which are um, enzymes released by the pancreas. And then you have like the gallbladder, which is the reserve for bile, which helps emulsify fats. Think of soap. It's just a little soap container like you have on the desk, not on the desk, on your sink. Right, you press a button, a little, little bit of soap comes out, you can wash your hands and gets rid of grease. That's what the gallbladder does. Now, bile is made in the liver and it transfers down through the common bile duct and all that jazz into the gallbladder. And then it's squirted out into the system when there's something like cheese or something shows up, something fried. People that don't have gallbladders can still eat that kind of stuff. It will make you a little bit uh, cruddy in the tummy. But um, getting that stuff in you, you have to just watch how much you eat because you can live without a gallbladder. You still make bile from the liver and it just gets little drippy, drippy, drippies all the time. Um, uh, other things too, pancreas. Pancreas also, the next guy down the list, that makes proteases for proteins into amino acids. It makes lipases from fats into fatty acids or lipids into fatty acids or fats into lipids and all that kind of stuff. So you can make all kinds of things. And then it, it does the amylase for the um, carbohydrates, which also starts up here in the mouth. As soon as you eat something like bread, you release a lot of amylase and that will reduce the starch into glucose, which is kind of the main thing that everything can be boiled down into. The other, pancre the other pancreas, no, the same pancreas, but the other parts of it are two things, the islets of Langerhans, which make insulin and the uh, other parts that make glucagon. That has to do with your sugar balance in your body. So if your sugar's getting real high in the blood, and that means it's not getting into the cells. We need some insulin. Insulin is like a key that opens up those cells and the, the glucose can get in and you feel better. Um, down the line, we have the, what we have the duodenum or duodenum, if you want to call that from the stomach, the duodenum into the um, jejunum and the ileum. The ileum, which means open all the time because when you do dissections, it tends to be empty for some reason. And <clears throat> that leads to the ICV or the ileocecal valve, which is down on the 
bottom right side where your appendix is. The appendix is a, uh, a little wormy looking thing. It's called the vermiform, which means worm-like. And that one um, releases some bacteria. It holds like an inoculant to help um, colonize the large intestine. The large intestine is a lot of bacteria, friendly bacteria, the good stuff, the stuff you want. You get it from kimchi, you get it from, from um, cheeses that are real cheese, and you get it from um, other fermented things. That helps you pull out vitamins, make other vitamins, and all that kind of jazz, which is really good for you. It also absorbs water through the large intestine. Large intestine, that's what it does, is basically a, um, a water reserve, uh, really, area, and it also holds on to a lot of that bacteria. And it's a holding tank, so when you go to the bathroom, you can go to the bathroom. So <clears throat> anyway, that's five minutes already of that whole whole thing. And then urinary system, remember, two kidneys, two ureters, and they're in the back. They're what's called, um, uh, uh, they're behind the, the periosteum. They're, they're, they're um, uh, what's it, retroperitoneal. Retro means behind, right? Retroperitoneal. Peritoneum, right back here, there's two of them, they're bean-shaped, right? The one on the uh, left is a little bit lower, yes, because of the liver, and no, because of the heart. Uh, one of those, I can't remember right off the top of my head, you have to look it up. Anyway, the, they go down to the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is a holding tank. As it expands, the muscles will contract, and there's two sphincters down there. One is an internal sphincter, which is in uh, vol uh, well, it's involuntary. You don't know. You just oh, the, there it goes open. I have to go pee, and then you can run to the bathroom and go pee with the secondary, the second one, which is um, <coughs> consciously controlled, voluntary. That is, for the most part, um, one good sneeze and it's all over. Um, anyway, so we've got those things, and then there's one urethra. The urethra is obviously longer in males than it is in females, and that's about it. So good luck on those. I, the discussions are amazing. Really, I mean, extra. if I had more hands, I'd give you more thumbs up because those things are freaking great. They're looking really awesome. And um, what I want to say also is um, yeah, discussion boards, man, really good, really good. Um, and I, I've been like, you know, checking in on those more often as well. Uh, some of your emails, I noticed <clears throat> some of you have had some problems where, where some stuff has been getting in late. That's okay. Let me know ahead of time like you did. Thank you. And uh, we'll, I'll work with you on those. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, most of the time, unless it's, you know, really, really late, there's not much I can do at that point. But, you know, if it's within a few days... It's not a problem. You've already let me know, so this is good. Um, your scores are looking beautifully, beautifully. If anybody's having problems, give me a contact. And uh, this is the first one for week five. There we go, week five, five, five. That's week five, and um, <clears throat> uh, getting ready for the final. So I, I, I'm working on the other little lecture part with the, the, the cardiac thing. I'll get back to you on that. Anyway, less than eight minutes. Here we go. See you later. Take good care, and we'll see you on the flip side.